What's up, everybody, and welcome to the season finale of Falcons in Focus. The wow. first season of this podcast is wrapping up. I'm Scott Bear. That's Tori McElhaney. Mm -hmm. Next to me, Falcons team president Greg Beatles. How does that title sound, by the way? Brand new. <laughs> Arthur Blank promoted Greg from an already illustrious position right. to team president. <laughs> Uh, quite, quite an accomplishment for somebody who grew up in the area, started as an intern. What is this uh, reaching this level of, of the organization and what you can do for it moving forward? Like, what does it mean to you uh, to be the uh, president of a team that you grew up cheering for? Well, uh, first of all, thank you guys <laughs> for having me on here. Um, it's a privilege, especially the, the last episode. That's pretty cool. Um, Scott, um, I mean, it's... It's, uh, you know, something I could have never dreamed about starting yeah. with the organization uh, a little more than 28 years ago, um, finishing up my graduate degree. And, and you know, this I thought was going to be sort of a short, short term internship gig for about 10 weeks. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been a little bit longer than 10 weeks. <laughs> and, um, you know, I like to say I started as an intern, and, and now I'm just, uh, I try to see myself as a glorified intern today. <laughs> I'm still just trying to do, um, you know, whatever the organization needs and uh, where I can bring value and, and benefit to, to everyone. So that's what I try to do every day. Now you talk about that internship, and I would like to go on the record that you did that internship, if, if I'm wrong, tell me, sure. but in 1995. Right? Yes. Don't Greg tell, already don't, knows where it's coming. Don't tell here. me how many years that is before you were born. It, was, <laughs> it wasn't that. It wasn't that many years. But I was born January thirtieth, nineteen ninety six. Okay. So, yeah. in in this context, I think that should be celebrated. The fact that for my entire life plus a year, you have been with this organization. That's Very pretty cool. cool. Yeah, Very and cool. and you ever. Hear that? That like it's that rap song lyric started from the bottom. Now we hear. Yeah. That's it. So we're gonna start. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna start at the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. You uh, joined this organization as a ten-week intern. Mm -hmm. um, you had other options on the table coming out of your master's degree program from Georgia State. Right. How and why did you end up taking this ten-week uh, gig way back when? Sure. Um, so, so I had, had come back to Georgia and moved to Atlanta and, um, went to graduate school to get my master's in sports administration at, at Georgia State, as you stated. And so it was the last thing I had to do was a, was an internship. And, um, so had a, had a couple of different opportunities and, uh, one was, was here with the Falcons. We'll talk about that. And another was with Georgia Tech's athletic department. Um, and uh, had a third as a as a full time job offer at Washington State University out in Pullman, Washington, wow. which is far. It's a, a long way away. A little bit further, you know, than Georgia State to <laughs> up here. Or a little colder to too. <laughs> a little bit colder. Um, and um, Scott and I were talking about earlier just uh, that I I pulled out an atlas because there were no. Google Maps or Waze <laughs> at the time. Yeah, Tori, I don't know if you know that, but Google Maps hasn't been around forever. <laughs> I couldn't drive anywhere without it. Or, go or Google, for that matter, right? <laughs> um, and just uh, kind of was plotting it out, trying to plan, think about, you know, how far this really is. And halfway is Denver, mm. you know, in 20-hour drive uh, in my little beat-up car, and uh, that was just a little too far. So I decided to stay in town, and with the home hometown team, uh, took the Falcons internship. Love it. Now, at that time... They were in. They were still in Swanee, correct? Yes. Please tell us a little bit about that time period and that uh, internship, but not just that, but the state of what the Falcons were at wow, that time. Yeah. yeah. So, even the state of Atlanta, like Swanee, was the furthest outpost. Right. You, you know, <laughs> yeah. From from the suburbs, if if you were out there, you're like, how far till you know till we get to Atlanta? Now you feel like you're in town and everything mm -hmm. way before you you get there. If you're coming say south from 85. Um, but uh, it was a lot different. It was a uh, different ownership. So, mm -hmm. so Mr. Blank uh, bought the team the end of 2001, 2002 was his first season. So, so we're talking about seven, seven years before then. So the original uh, owners, the Smith family, um, who great folks, um, really enjoyed working with them, still, still try to stay in, in touch with them. Uh, several of them still, still here in town. Uh, but we, 
our training camp, yeah, it was in Swanee, right off 85. There's a there's a big office complex there now, but uh, we owned uh, the Falcon Inn and Conference Center. <laughs> okay, <laughs> which was a hotel and conference center, and we and we had training camp there yeah. for the longest period of time. Uh, and then we also owned a public health club, so the so the Falcon complex, and so. It was um, big uh, when racquetball was was all the rage, <laughs> um, and so so we helped to run those two businesses um, along with with the team, of course. But we had training camp there. There was a McDonald's behind it, and so folks would come and sit on this hill behind the McDonald's and watch uh, practice and training camp um, back in the day. So it was Man. a little bit different. <laughs> than now. Different? Yeah. yeah, right. And and you're an intern, and you're surviving on an intern's income, right? Uh, <laughs> We've well, all been there. <laughs> yes, yep, we have. Yep, yep, <laughs> what right. was that period like? You're probably eating a lot of McDonald's to get by <laughs> at that point. <laughs> well, on the, the dollar menu, nonetheless. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The the cool thing was that uh, the staff got to eat next door at the Falcon Inn. Oh, awesome. You know, in restaurants. So of course, me and the other young folks. That's where we hung out <laughs> as much as we could. You know, to to get some food. Um, but, but it was, I mean, it was such a great time for me. Just, you know, I'd never been around I- anything like that. And so just, just the ability to, uh, to learn and, and help out in different areas that I could, you know, I, I kind of split my time then between those different businesses, but, uh, we were much, much smaller shop. So I started out in the finance group, uh, which was three people you know, <laughs> okay. for, for every, I said group, it makes it sound bigger than it is. A trio. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. And, and so, um, you know, the guys that I worked with, my, my, my boss did uh, player negotiations, salary cap, wow. and then, you know, just the normal uh, things you think about with finance and budgeting and all that. So got to learn, you know, salary cap, the collective bargaining agreement, all those sort of things um, from early on, which... Um, you know, just a great experience. It's crazy to think about the changes over the uh, since that point and where we are, are now with everything. It, I mean, it's a full on operation. Like the the growth oh. of it is un, unreal. When you really sit down and you say there were three people in our finance department right. in 1995, 1996. That's mind boggling to me as a professional like sporting team. It, I mean, sure. it, but it's it just goes back to kind of like where it was at the time. Now, another thing that I believe Scott told me as well, the players stayed at like a Best Western, like like or, or they a stayed hotel. At, that that at was the Falcon Inn. That the was Falcon it. The Falcon Inn was, okay. a, was a, a a Best Western franchise. It's okay. you know for some period of time. Yeah, uh-huh. and so that's where they would. That's where they'd stay during camp. That's where the coaches would stay. And is that where the staff was staying too, or did did you have an a, an apartment or something? Uh, for for those that stayed during camp, you uh-huh. know, those of us who live nearby just just went home like like now. But yeah, uh, yeah. Wow. Wow, that's a lot, that, lot different. I mean, in those early days, do you have like a a story that sticks out as like this is really me living the intern life? For the Falcons, <laughs> is, there, is there a moment? Maybe it was an odd job or or something that really sticks out in your mind. Yeah, th- yeah, there was a there was a few. Um, so around that that time is when uh, so there's also Tori this thing called the internet has right. existed forever. <laughs> right, right. And so uh, <laughs> a, a few of us, our IT department and and myself and our PR team, we actually started AtlantaFalcons.com. Oh wow! So we went out and like secured the URL way back in the day. And started it, and then uh, my uh, my big thing with that was that I started the team store online. Uh-huh. So we didn't have it before then. I th- so '98, uh, when we won the NFC Championship, went to the Super Bowl, was the first year that we had an online store. And so, uh, so I took the pictures of all the product, ordered the product, uploaded it onto a Yahoo store that we <laughs> used. I got all the emails for the orders, and then uh, my wife Jill would come during lunch and help me ship it all out. Wow. And so we we had a storage room over at the Falcon Inn, and so we'd box it all up, and UPS would come, and especially that year because the playoffs, we sold four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars of Gosh. merchandise, which back then was a whole lot. Yeah. Um, but but that was pre- that was pretty cool. And another wow. w- just learning like how does this stuff even work? How right. does the internet? How do you upload a picture and all that <laughs> yeah. kind of stuff? Um, you know, we we did from the very beginning. So so that was one. One fun example. Wow. You, you've done, you've been involved in almost every department within the organization, right? But you've also had some fun, odd jobs, right? Like, yeah, sure. Like, it, 
I think that you told me that you that you started doing pre and post snap still photos. Like you go up to the coach's box. Like, right. what was that environment like? Like you're in a game, you're trying to get the stuff down to the field because it's not getting sent down there. Right. And coaches are probably either pretty upset or pretty excited. It must have been a, a really depending on the game <laughs> crazy environment to to be in. Like, tell us more about. That it, one. It, it, it was. So, uh, you know, we all sort of had our normal, quote, day jobs. But then on, on game days, we'd, we'd help out any way that we can. So one of the ones I did for several years was take the, 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 the still photos. Uh, and so, you know, now we have the Microsoft Surface and all the big <laughs> technology and it downloads and, and all that sort of thing. So uh, in the early days, uh, we would, we would uh, first we only had one, one camera, like, up in the coach's box mm -hmm. or, or a feed to the coach's box and so you know we had a little black and white tv about this big <laughs> and we're trying to look and see the best best uh, second to kind of get the pre-snap and post post snap reads and it print out on fax paper mm -hmm. you, I don't, i'm not really not this I, old I, you know, I don't uh, think i am either but i know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about print out, print out on fax paper <laughs> and and we would punch three holes in it and put it in a three ring binder and so the coaches up in the in the box would look at it, and then we would send the same uh, book down on the field for the players and coaches to look at it. So just think about the time, the different, you know, how yeah. long it takes to get down there. And so uh, our good buddy Spencer Treadwell, who's our VP of operations now, he was he was one of the, one of the runners, and so he would run it down to the sideline and everything, and then he'd deliver messages back up, you know. A, you know, the offensive coordinator's not happy with how you're taking the picture. You need to do it faster, mm -hmm. slower, whatever. Um, and uh, sometimes when I was doing it on the field, I did have a few coaches come over and, you know, have a, have a few words with us about, you know, <laughs> it's taking too long or whatever. So that's pretty stressful as, a, as an intern or, or a, young, uh, a young guy with, uh, with the football coaches and everything yeah. that they're having to deal with going on. It's um, like we're trying our best. We're yes. literally running. <laughs> and so I was, I was thinking about this, and I talked to Spencer about it. And he actually couldn't remember this, so I, so I, uh, I texted uh, one of our former video directors yesterday to confirm this, make sure I wasn't like <laughs> dreaming this. But <laughs> in New Orleans, uh, the end zone camera location was up really high, mm. and, and still is. But you, you pretty much had to like climb into the air duct system. For where they would set up the cameras wow. okay and what we did up there to keep from having to it would take 20 minutes to get right. down to the field and so uh from brian borgner our equipment manager we we would get a sock an athletic sock and put a piece of soap in it put the pictures in tie a knot and during timeouts we would throw it down <gasps> oh on the field from like the 700 level of the superdome <laughs> So we'd have to wait, make sure our guy was down there so, you know, no ref or anybody would get hit and sling this sock down on the field. And, uh, That's wild. Yeah, so it's a little – the technology is a little bit different. We were innovating continuously, even back then, <laughs> with the sock. So. And, and Honestly, it's it's now – I feel like that it's the same concept as the um, the parachute drop now that they do at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. That This was the inception. Did inspiration if we for that. had the – that would have been safer if we had, <laughs> had parachute. the parachute, but we didn't have the parachute. No. <laughs> you had a sock and soap. That's all there you need you sometimes. Yep. But yeah, uh, you also worked on the stat crew. Right. Yes. For yep. like uh, for a while, and you grew up. You, you played uh, baseball and basketball. Yeah. Right. But yep. you really get a chance to learn the game when you're doing player participation. You know, yeah. snap yeah. in and snap out, understanding these stats and being around these coaches. You, you really kind of got immersed in the game in a way that you know few people do. That yeah, that was definitely help for me just to to better my understanding of the game because I did. My, my dad was a college basketball coach his whole career, fifty plus years. So reminds me a lot of Coach. He's, you know, retiring after 50 years in the business. Um, and so that's what I grew up around and, and uh, never never played football or was around it very much. Um, and so those early years of being in the in the coach's box and hearing the guys talk about it and me being able to ask them later when the pressure was off mm -hmm. just about, you know, strategy and things like that uh, really helped. And, and um, yeah, doing player – keeping up with player participation for contract mm -hmm. purposes – you know, I started to say, okay, on third down, these guys are coming in and those mm -hmm. guys are going off and, you know, start to understand what, what the coaches and the team was trying to do was helpful. Nice. I, I like that you brought up uh, your dad as well. I, I'm a coach's kid. Um, I feel like 
we it's almost like a fraternity of, yeah like of all there's like yeah. a certain kinship like, yeah because yeah, it's like we understand we speak the same language did he ever coach you did you play basketball and did he yeah, ever I, I did so he he coached he was a, an assistant coach uh for i played ba- uh, college basketball one season at a at a small school and mm-hmm. he was there um, so that was that was interesting. Um, <laughs> before that, I did a lot of basketball camps, you know, that he right. was leading and things like that. And so, um, when your when your dad's your coach, uh, whenever someone needs to be picked on or made, uh, you know, made a lesson out of, it was it's always it's, it's you. you know yeah. you. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so yeah, and that's, there's a lot of, of good, I think that, that comes out of that, but, um, I, I, yeah, I did. So I did play with him for one season. How yeah. much did, uh, I guess like him being in, even though it's, you know, basketball world, but in the sports world and, and kind of yeah. being and in charge of AD. Yeah. It, yeah. How did that kind of shape you into kind of your trajectory and what you wanted yeah. to do? Um, just a, a huge influence. Mm, mm-hmm. Um, you know, so he was, he was at smaller NAI schools and so um, like we're talking about how our business has grown a little bit smaller but all the same the same basics I I think the biggest thing um, just being able to relate to the coaching lifestyle I mean it's very different it's it's just one of the hardest jobs just the pressure they have and um, how they've got to move around Um, and so being able to relate to those guys you know just Mm -hmm. I think comes a little bit more natural and and understanding where they're coming from Uh, and thinking about their families you know, right, and, yeah. and when we get to meet them and talk about them, being able to relate to them and understand um, how much, you know, they're sacrificing for the for the good of the team, um, I think has given me good perspective over the years. Nice. Well, and there was a point where your, your first job out of undergrad at LSU was in the oil and gas industry, yes. right? And it was yeah. more finance-based and obviously not in sports. Right. That right. didn't last very long. No, no, so uh, went to LSU for my undergrad. Congratulations to, ah, the, to yes. the dogs. We are recording this the day after the dogs won the national championship. Yes. So Tori's very excited. I, I'm pretty pumped. Congratulations. <laughs> um, went to LSU, and uh, my first job was in Houston, Texas, uh, in the oil and gas industry. So worked for a company that did uh, underwater uh, drilling and um, – Built drilling derricks and things like that, so very exciting <laughs> <laughs> um, for some people. Obviously, yeah, it yeah, is. yeah. Um, so you know, I was there a couple of years and, and learned a lot just about about business. But just I figured out pretty quick it was not what I wanted to do and how I wanted to spend the rest of my life, you know, of, or my career at least. So started thinking about other options and you know combining sports and business because of the background, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. with, with my dad and then uh, my interest in business. Um, so that's when I decided to come to graduate school and come back home. My family had, had moved back to Georgia at the time, and most everyone was here. So it, it was just a natural move uh, just to make sense. at that point. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, so so then you get in with the Falcons. We're kind of having a lot of fun talking about the old days, right? But you've also been instrumental in taking this this team, this organization, mm-hmm. into the future, right? Mm-hmm. And kind of everything about what's developed you know, throughout this process. And that's kind of where I want to get into next. And I, sure. I think, obviously, you go back to when Arthur Blank bought the team. You were yeah. part of the, the process of selling the uh, team to Arthur. But um, meeting Arthur Blank for the first time, I mean, he, <laughs> I mean he's just, he's, he's such a magnetic personality yeah. and yeah. go-getter type of thing. Uh, what was that experience like meeting him? And, you know, uh, what was it like back then? Um, yeah, back then, I mean, it, it was, uh, it was scary, <laughs> you know, so, yeah, sure. so you think about it, s- selling the team and our small little group, my, my boss and I basically helped to, um, help to sell the team to, to Arthur and his team. So, um, you know, there's a story where our, our CF at the time, his name was Jim Hay, was a great mentor to me. Um, he, he and I walked into a room where we were going to go through all, start, the process with all of Arthur's team. I want to say all of Arthur's team. There were 17 people around the table okay. from his side, and there were me and my boss on the other side. Oh my goodness! And so we're we're going through explaining how do player contracts work and right. summary of all of those, how do sponsorship deals work, how does the NFL revenue sharing work, just 
all the things of the business. And, um, you know, Arthur's got bankers from two different banks and, and <laughs> attorneys from two different legal firms and all that. It's just you guys being like. Yeah. yeah. And we're like, OK. So, um, you know, that was uh, several, several days and weeks of kind of going through everything. And, and then, of course, uh, the data room was actually a room with a bunch of paper. It wasn't, wow. you know, um, in the cloud. So, uh, but it, but it was good. Um, after that process, um, Arthur decided to to let me stay around. So that so that was good. <laughs> and uh, and my boss retired just a few months after that. And so Arthur promoted me at that time. It was the first time that I was an officer. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't really know what a what that meant to be, <laughs> yeah. even to be a, a vice president, but. Um, just really was able to jump in with with him from the very beginning and you know he took me to the first nfl owners meeting and um you know i he he wanted me to help introduce him to a bunch of people around the league and so the three people that i knew i introduced (laughs) him to and and then made a lot of quick introductions you know before i was introducing him to the next person and and uh and so we we've been doing that working together now for more than more than 20 years mm-hmm. um, so it's that, been great that's crazy too I mean I the there aren't very many people who I think can say that they went through a they were with the organization and then it gets sold to a new person new yeah. owner and then continued with the organization after that going back to that time you said you know there was like some fear there there it was kind sure. of it was scary I mean can you speak more to what that time really felt like as you're kind of going through this, like, who is this Arthur Blank guy? What's he going to do with this organization type right. of thing? What, right. Those feelings. Yeah, that's great. I, I, I mean, it was, it was a good mix of excitement because right. here's this super successful business person, uh, very pr- professional with a lot of resources coming, mm-hmm. coming uh, and purchasing the team. And then a lot of times, you know, when when any any business or a new owner comes in, a lot of times they want to bring their own people, especially right. like financial people and legal people um, that they've worked with. So um, so there was definitely apprehension, mm-hmm. you know, about that. Um, and so uh, you know, after I think it was even before Arthur, we closed the deal with Arthur. He wanted to go around and meet um, all the you know the leaders of the business, like each department head. And so he took time, went around, sat in, sat in everybody's office, asked them what they did, and. And so there were some positions, um, you know, the assistant pro personnel director, yeah. Arthur had no idea what that was <laughs> at the time. And so he's like, okay, tell me what you do. How does this work? Um, and so, you know, I'm the finance guy. So he comes in and sits down and closes the door and says, okay, pull out the financial statements. We're going to go through every single page line by line. I want to know this, 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 <laughs> oh and this. Oh, my gosh. So uh, there was no uh, learning, you know, right. what I was supposed to be doing. He, he knew right away. Um, and almost uh, like kindred spirits in a way. <laughs> that, there, there is. I mean, we definitely spoke the same language, yeah. and um, I think you know that brought him a comfort that that I understood the business right. and I could speak in his same language. It wasn't something that he had he had to learn. Um, so we we built uh, that rapport um, early on, and and really. We've been talking so much about your experience with the Falcons, but but you but you've represented uh, Mr. Blank in getting the Atlanta United up and running. Yeah. There's uh, I don't know if anybody knows, but there's a, a beautiful venue down in, in um, down in Atlanta's West Side that's one of the best in the world. <laughs> right, right, right. You ever heard of that one? Uh, yeah. Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Yeah. You were instrumental in getting that project done right <laughs> a and, very big project and, <laughs> and i don't even know how to, to describe that other than in talking to you and talking to others that this is a years-long process yeah. mm-hmm. right. and I, and i guess you know what are you most proud of from going from an idea yeah. in your brain in arthur's brain in the or- organization's brain to seeing the majesty of what it's become or the I mean, magnitude you know yeah. i've been to mm-hmm. every nfl stadium right. there's nothing like it yeah. yeah uh what are you most proud of from that yeah. experience so uh i mean the idea definitely came from arthur's brain at mm-hmm. the very beginning early on um at the georgia dome great partners for us the georgia world congress Center can still a great partner yep. partner for us and will be for a long time um, but it wasn't our stadium. You know, right. we, we were uh, the, the primary tenant there, but still a tenant. So we didn't control um, a lot about the game day. Uh, we didn't even at the beginning sell the sponsorships, which is, you know, wow. today yeah. just kind of foreign to think about. Uh, we didn't sell the premium seating, the club seats or the, or the suites. 
we later kind of started to transition where we took some of those things over. Um, but Ar Arthur wanted to be in control and, you know, come from Home Depot, just the customer experience. He wanted to right. be sure that we could 100% control the fan experience. So one of, the, one of the early things he asked all of us was, what do we need to do to, to own our own stadium, to build our own stadium? And so we started working on that, you know, very, very early. Um, with um, Atlanta United, uh, we talked pretty seriously to the MLS all the way back in 2007 wow. about potentially having a franchise and got along pretty, pretty far with that. Um, and uh, once our uh, negotiations, discussions about the new stadium really started heating up and we knew it was going to be a reality, Arthur wanted to pause yeah. very wisely because uh, he was about the only one that thought, hey, we could do this downtown in a NFL-sized stadium, um, you know, when the rest of, of the MLS was going out in suburbs and, and mm -hmm. just kind of marketing and doing things a little bit differently. So he had that foresight. Um, so we kind of hit pause on that, focused on, on, on the stadium and the negotiations, which, um, you know, were, were – years in the making before we got to uh, putting a shovel in the ground mm -hmm. um, in 2013. So um, all the different sites that we looked at potentially downtown, outside of Atlanta, we had a lot of incoming, you know, m municipalities and counties that, that heard that we were thinking about a new stadium. Uh, we fully vetted whether or not the Georgia Dome uh, could be renovated or not. And that was months and months and months um, to work through all that. And we, along with the Georgia World Congress Center and the state, decided uh, it was almost as expensive to do a renovation on the Georgia Dome as build a new one. Um, and it would have limitations on it just because of the structure and everything else. So, um, you know, over, overall, from the very beginning of starting to parse through all that to the day that we opened it in the summer 2017 was, was probably pretty close to 10 years, right. uh, you know, for mm -hmm. Arthur and Rich and I and a few others. Man, it's, it's fun, too, because I, it, the, I believe this is at the family office. I'm not entirely sure, but there's a diagram of, like, the first diagram that was presented to you guys of, yes. of Mercedes-Benz Stadium, and um, it's it's – it's funny because it's it's big, but it's it's small compared to the yeah, the main sure. thing. But it's it's cool looking at that and being like this. I mean, everything comes from an idea. Everything's built upon an idea and a thought. But when you look back at that time and kind of the early planning days of what this was gonna be, is there anything that was that like surprises you about what is there now? If, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, I, I've got a couple of uh, sketches hanging up in my office that uh, the architects first did when they were first pitching the idea of the roof mm -hmm. and all of that. And it's a perspective looking from the west side out to what we call the window to the city. Mm -hmm. And what strikes me when I look at it is it's almost identical to what really happened. Really? Wow. And that's, you know, that's so rare in any kind of architectural design, anything um, and especially something of that size and, right. and, and magnitude, because th this was from like our very first sketchbook that they gave us. Uh, and there's so many revisions, meetings, changes after that. But um, that vision um, that they had and that we all bought into stayed pretty consistent. And then we just worked around it to, to make it happen. That's cool. Yeah. And then so you you get to the point now you've worked in not only just the Falcons organization, but the stadium and the soccer team and all of Arthur Blank's businesses. Mm -hmm. And now you're really refocused on the Falcons, right? right. As the Falcons team president. And that's, that would like, that would be a, a great accomplishment for anybody, no matter where they came from. Mm -hmm. But you have a Steve Barkowski Jersey, right? <laughs> like you grew up a Falcons fan. What does that add to, yeah. to this, um, I, I wish I still had had that jersey. We I, were gonna I was going to ask if you had it still. <laughs> I, I asked my sister if she could find some pictures, so I think she's digging around trying <laughs> trying to, to find them. But um, I would definitely have Bart, uh, who's a good friend, to sign that for me. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it, it. I mean, it's really special. Um, so uh, growing up in the Falcons, as I did, and we got to the point where Arthur bought the team, and then uh, started working on A and B S E. So all the sports mm -hmm. entities. Um, really back in earnest back in, in 2012. So, you know, the last 10 or 11 years, 
Um, I, I wouldn't trade it for anything. So being able to work on all the stadium things, being able to launch United and and help to oversee all that from a, a strategy and financial perspective has, has been wonderful. Um, but I have, uh, you know, bounced around a lot and gone from Flowery Branch to downtown to Marietta to Arthur's family office way more times than I want, you know, to, <laughs> to count. Um, I have an electric car, so that has helped <laughs> for sure. Um, but being able to come back and just uh, we kind of started it last year, uh, getting getting refocused on on Flowery Branch and uh, rebuilding and building further building sort of the team identity and team culture and not not you know just on the field but all of us that that work up here um, as one and so we had that for a long time and then uh, with A and B S E we have a lot of great people and they're all helping out all these businesses uh, and so I think that has suffered uh, a little bit over over the last several years and so last couple of years feels like uh we're we're rebuilding that and and uh making people proud to you know to work for the team and and not feel like we're working for a sports and entertainment you know corporate business right if that makes sense yeah no and it's i mean even to that end just the facilities here i mean we're inside the falcons indoor practice facility on on this campus that when you started wasn't even a thing right. and now there are i mean well, yeah. Ticketmaster studios, Ticket Master coming studios online and, and it's have all just, the dorms out there right and, it's just wild to think about the growth that i mean over the course of your career that this organization has had but even in that i think to break it down on a microscopic level like this i feel like from everything i've read about you and what you're talking about is like this has always been about family and for you, I love the story of you and your wife literally shipping out in 1998 all of the all this merchandise and everything. Yep. What has the family, your wife Jill, meant to you in these 28 years? Uh, because it, it is a family thing. It's a family business. So uh, some of our friends read the the uh, article that Scott wrote yesterday, and so they were texting Jill and I and, and making fun of her for shipping out the boxes and stuff. <laughs> so I said, I gave her the, the day off today. She's not having to ship any boxes right. out, but well, she's going nice. to be right back on, <laughs> right back on it uh, t- today. So, um, yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, we're, we live 10 miles from here and have for a long time, and and so this uh, this part of town um, is 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 important to us. Our, our roots are here. Our our family is nearby. Um, my extended family, you know, lives lives in the area. <clears throat> so uh, it is important. Um, I've got four kids, and they all love going going to our games and our events uh, down at the stadium. Um, and so uh, you know, not only. We want our business here, and everybody works here to feel like a, the Falcons family. But mm-hmm. my personal family, it's it's important as well. Yeah, and now, I mean, this really is a full circle, I think, moment. And can you imagine, like, thirteen-year-old Greg, like, what he would think about where you ended up, <laughs> and to kind of be like, yeah, man. It's all going to work out. I'm going to be the president of, of this organization I, that you like so much. I mean, it's it, so far-fetched. Uh, you know, I didn't probably didn't even know what a president was. Right, yeah. <laughs> you know, seriously. So um, I grew up in a very small rural area yeah. uh, up in northeast Georgia. We have one flashing yellow light, I think, still. Yeah. And so, um, I'm from a town that had one red one, We had a red light, but so Well, you little, were big time. Bit, you guys yeah. were big time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So uh, I, I wouldn't even been able to fathom it yeah. or, or comprehend it, just uh, especially the way the business is now yeah. compared to when I started. All right. We have reached the point. I think it's my favorite <laughs> section of the podcast. Definitely. Rapid fire. Yeah. Greg Beatles, you're officially on the hot seat. Y'all got just me like, nervous about this. <laughs> just like Grady Jarrett and Drake London before you. And yeah. we're going to ask you, <laughs> no joke, the exact same questions. Uh, okay. E- everybody gets the same Everybody ones. gets the same ones. But, I mean, you can kind of interpret them how how you can't you should and i've watched the show but i can't remember what they are <laughs> no, so no, i'm yeah. nervous here. Okay. that's the all best right, let's when, see how we do that's yeah. the best when people actually aren't prepared for the question yeah. okay um question number one your favorite play is a falcon or a which game could or be a game for you uh okay so i would say the uh, 
1998 season NFC championship game. Mm, okay. And, and, yeah, at Minnesota. And so I was uh, in the coach's box doing the pictures then. Wow. And so uh, just amazing game, amazing experience, the euphoria afterwards, everything that happened after that leading up to the Super Bowl. Obviously, wish I could say that was a favorite game. <laughs> but, um, you know, that was just that was really early in my career and just uh, unbelievable experience to go through that. Love it. What is either your one of your favorite TV shows or something that you're binge watching right now? Like what's on in the Beatles household? <laughs> um, so I ha- I'm a I'm a few years behind, but I have started watching The Good Place. Yes, and so oh, uh, love that show. I, I'm in season two, so my 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 uh, second oldest child, my son in college, uh, clued me in on it, <laughs> and um, and so I, I realize now. Um, he's been going around saying these things, and I didn't know it was from the show. <laughs> you you <laughs> right? just thought that he was just, like, yeah. making stuff yeah, up. Yeah, he said yeah. something about, you know, do you have a nefarious agenda? <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, you know, eight or nine episodes in, someone said it. that. I'm like, ah, he didn't even tell me that. So that, that was kind sense. of a little Easter egg <laughs> to find out. So uh, I'm watching that right now. I finished the show. It only gets better. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. And more philosophical, but in a super But in a good way. Yeah, yeah awesome yeah. way. Uh, question number three, um, who is your favorite former Falcons player? Oh, wow. I know that's hard. <laughs> <sighs> that is hard. <laughs> um, I So I, I'll say Michael Vick. Okay. okay. And there's a lot of uh, pros and cons and everything with, with Mike, but um, I think obviously the excitement that he brought to the game, the yeah. way he helped to change the game as it's Absolutely. played in the NFL today. Um, and then just what uh, Mike has been able to do with his life after all of his difficulties and where he's at today, um, I think he's a great role model for, for kids. And so love him. What he did on the field and, and what he's doing now with his life is great. You know what's so cool is there there are a, a number of Falcons on the roster now who grew up oh, in yeah. the Atlanta area. And you – Every single one of them is like, yeah, I had my number seven. Like, right, yeah. Everybody yeah. had one yeah. that he ca- – I, I didn't live here then, but that he captivated. Well, yeah. I lived across the country, and he captivated the whole country. Yeah. But I think especially this market. There Absolutely. was something that he inspired a lot of these kids who came up and yeah. became really great football players. Yeah. Uh, so I definitely like that answer. Mm-hmm. This is going to be an interesting question. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it might be our favorite one. Yeah. Uh, which Falcon – and that's anybody in the organization, obviously not roster or coach. But which Falcon do you hang out with the most? Uh, so I have to say Rich McKay. Oh, I was hoping <laughs> to say that. Yeah. <laughs> so for one, our offices are right next door to each other. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, it doesn't matter if I'm on, you know, the most important uh, teams call, video, whatever. Um, you know, he'd just come busting in the door and, <laughs> and start talking. I'm like, um, sorry, everyone, all 100 people that I'm addressing right now. Let me, <laughs> let me put you on mute so I can, I can help Coach McKay out here. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's definitely rich. So, so, you know, from a business perspective, you know, we, um, we've worked together for um, close to 20 years yeah. now. And uh, we're, we're very symbiotic, I think, in, in just complimenting one another. I was about in to say, styles. y'all are two very different styles. Yes, And definitely. I think that's why y'all probably work so well together. I, I agree. I think that's definitely it. Um, so areas that, that I'm weak in, you know, he's stronger in and vice versa. Um, you know, he'll, he'll like to come in and throw out an idea or write it on my whiteboard, and then I have to actually figure out, okay, is, is, is this way? something that's real that we could actually <laughs> do? And and uh, and sometimes if I'm studying something and I've gone through 100 different iterations of it to make sure it's just right, he's like, you know, Beatles, we have to actually move forward and do this. Sometimes. So, <laughs> so uh, and, and, you know, then we, we just enjoy one another um, outside of the office as well. Um you know, he's he's a coach's kid, too, right, so we have right. that, yeah. you know, as, as kind of a natural connection. Um, his family's great, knows family well, and, and vice versa. So, nice. Yeah, I, I sat in his office the other day talking about you, and he said, <laughs> Greg is a master of the details, an area where I am incredibly deficient. <laughs> That's a quote. That he, that he, yeah, he comes in See, with a He, w- he won't admit idea. that to me, but so I'm <laughs> glad he will to you. Yeah. Yeah. It's well, on the record it's now. It's on the record now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last one. Last one. Um, what is your biggest pet peeve? Oh, well. Yeah, we've had a lot of really good 
off the wall answers. Avery Williams, I think, had my favorite one. He said it was uh, when people say salmon and not salmon. Oh, which that I have never heard that being a specific pet peeve that yeah. someone had. So that one was a that one was a good one. Yeah, we yeah. get slow drivers. We, we get, get slow all, drivers. Like yeah. all kinds of stuff. Anything yeah. pop in your head there? <sighs> uh, Maybe because I have too many that's taking me <laughs> a second to, <laughs> to think about it. Um, my uh, so my wife Jill is is uh, definitely part of the grammar police and so she's probably <laughs> worn off on me you know um on uh on there you know right, right, they, yeah. they're, spelling they're, it they're the wrong way there. the way people put it even if it's a text it's like, i'm like Jill, it's just a text but <laughs> but i'm afraid that's rubbed off on me so probably a little bit of of the grammar police i am in your camp 100 <laughs> comma usage is my big thing well my, you should yeah. be that's what you do for a living <laughs> right, we so. do write for a living my friends get mad at me because i'll text them and they're like why are you putting a period there right. like i well, use proper yeah. punctuation a comma can change the entire meaning of a sentence yes. yep. uh, i will get off on a tangent on that but <laughs> We do have to wrap this podcast at some point. Greg, thank you so much for yes, taking the you. time. And thanks to Tori and to everybody who's been in on this podcast since day one. Yeah. We don't talk a lot of football here. You get to know people within the organization and yeah. to see the positive comments and everything that we've had talking to, you know, about players, talking to our team president mm -hmm. has been, it's been such a positive start. And we're so excited for what yeah. comes next. Uh, I think I th Scott and I say this all the time. This is our favorite part of the week. 100%. Uh, when we these get to moments, these moments, these moments when, when you really get to know individuals, right. it doesn't cool. get yeah, any cool. better than that over a longer period. Yeah. Um, so that's been great. As I always say here, please continue to rate, review, subscribe to the Atlanta Falcons <laughs> podcast network. I think I do the same hand gesture yeah, yeah, every yeah, yeah. time. <laughs> uh, but thank you guys so much. The plans that we have for yeah. the future of this thing so inside now everybody knows about Ticketmaster studios there's a podcast studio in there and it is so, glorious so, so we're all excited for that uh greg thanks once more thanks to everybody for downloading and listening and we will talk to you really really soon see ya <laughs>